Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingrid Kalkvist and I was born 1960 in Sweden. When the Social Democrats were going to rule forever and ever, and our country was the nicest and safest and most progressed in the world. Now, I live in Absurdistan, <laughs> a country that has the highest figure of reported rapes in the world, hundreds of so-called exclusion areas where people live outside the Swedish society and with newspapers that hide all these horrible facts to the people. I feel just like Dorothy Gale in The Wizard of Oz. A tornado came and blew me miles and miles away from my home and dumped me in a country I don't know. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Sweden anymore. <laughs> like Dorothy, I'm searching for a way to find my home, but on my path I only meet lions without courage, scarecrows without brains, and tin men without hearts. When I grew up, our Prime Minister was Tage Erlanda, a Social Democrat. In 1965, he said in Parliament, after violent race riots in America, we Swedes live in a so infinitely happier situation. The population in our country is homogenous, not just according to race, but also in many other aspects. Now I live in a nation that is not homogenous in any aspect. Olof Palme that came after him decided that homogenous was a bad thing and open up our borders for people from all over the world. And from right to left, the politicians told us that there were no such thing as a Swedish culture, no Swedish traditions worth mentioning, and that we Swedes should be grateful that so many people with real culture and real traditions came to us. Mona Salin, a later leader of the Social Democrats, said 2002, uh, with a magazine, you're a Turk. Um, she's, she was asked, what is Swedish culture? And she said, I've often had that question, but I can't think of what Swedish culture is. I think that is what makes us Swedes so envious of immigrants. You have a culture, an identity, something that ties you together. What do we have? We have Midsummer's Eve and such corny things. She also said, the Swedes must integrate into the new Sweden. The old Sweden is not coming back. In this new Sweden, we have more reported rapes than any other country in the European Union, according to uh, the study by Professor Liz uh, Kelly from England. More than 5,000 rapes were reported that year, 2008. Last year, it was more than 6,000. In 2010, another study reported that just one country in the world has more rapes than Sweden, and that is Lesotho in South Africa. For every 100,000 people, Lesotho has 92 reported rapes, Sweden has 53, the United States 29, Norway 20, and Denmark 7. In 1990, we counted to three exclusion areas in Sweden, suburbs where mostly immigrants live, where they very few uh, work, and they all live by welfare, and the children don't pass their exams. In 2002, they counted to 128 exclusion areas. In 2006, we had 156, and then they stopped counting. In some cities like Malmö, where I live, a third of all inhabitants live in an exclusion area. What did the Social Democrats mean? The, the, um, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, 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 Erlander, when he said, 
that we Swedes were homogenous, I think that he meant things like norms, values, culture, and tradition, a feeling of fellowship that we all in the old Sweden had a similar view of what makes the society good and how we solve conflicts. He knew what the Swedish culture was about, in contrast to Mona Salin. In the new Sweden, we need armed police officers at our hospitals because riveling families fight each other in the hospital rooms. They gun each other down in the streets and they rob and they beat old people. The crime rate grows by the minute, but the Swedish politicians and journalists tell us that it has absolutely nothing to do with immigration. <laughs> the fact that our prisons are full of foreign people is just a coincidence or is explained by socio-economic factors. For many years I was a mainstream media journalist but I was always a bit of a troublemaker, always suspicious of what people said was the truth. When everybody ran that way, I always turned around to see what was in the other way. And in January last year, something happened to make me lose my last hope about Swedish journalists. I, I was the vice chairman of the Society of Publicists in Malmo, and we had invited the Danish journalist, Mikael Jalving, to speak about his uh, book, Absolute Sweden, a country, uh, Absolute Sweden, The Journey in the Country of Silence. And one day the chairman phoned me and said, we must cancel Mikael Jalving. Why? Because he's going to talk at a meeting arranged by a newspaper called National Today. It didn't matter to him, the chairman or anyone else on the board of this Society for Journalists that Jalvi was going to speak about his book. If he went to that meeting, he would be infected by nationalist ideas and probably he would become a Nazi. <laughs> you see, everyone with a different opinion in Sweden really is a Nazi. That's the way it works in the new Sweden, the country I call Absurdistan the country of silence. I was furious and I left the board of that society. I left the society. And that led to my being invited to the Danish Free Press Society to talk about this strange country of Sweden. And that led to my founding the Swedish Free Press Society. And that is how I met Lars Hedegaard and but we too, we didn't settle for running one free press society each. We have a solid background uh, 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 as journalists, both of us, so we decided to start a newspaper, a good old, old-fashioned printed newspaper. We decided to call it Dispatch International because our vision is that this newspaper will become worldwide one day. At first we take Manhattan, then we take Berlin. Or rather, first we take Scandinavia, and then we take the world. We will have two printed versions, one Danish and one Swedish, but the stories are the same. And you will find it in uh, uh, the stories in German and English as well on the uh, e-paper. We will write about politics in our countries and in the world, and we will write about all those things that mainstream media has been hiding for so many years now. We will distinguish between news stories and uh, commentaries, and the tone will be subdued. We will let the facts talk, the facts that mainstream journalists hide from people. The situation in Sweden is far worse than the Danish. In Sweden, nobody talks about immigration problems and the death of the multiculti project or the Islamization of Europe. If you do, you will immediately be called a racist, an Islamophobe, or a Nazi. That's what I have been called since I founded the Free Press Society. 
My name has been dragged in the dirt in big newspapers like Sydsvenskan, Svenska Dagbladet, and my own union paper, The Journalist. So now I need you all to be my Glinda, the good witch of the North, and help me find my home again. I don't think it will work to tap the heels of my ruby slippers together three times as Dorothy did to wake up in her bedroom in Kansas. But if you support Dispatch by taking a subscription or become a shareholder or just donate money to us, you will take me one step closer to home, to the Sweden that once was, the Sweden I want back. Thank you.